because every time I cross it thinking certain that this is the good time, it seems like I end up running back across it. So I wheel up here thinking, oh man, we're going to slaughter these French troops. And that I would have. So you can see them pull up and we get into an intense line infantry fight at close quarters. And I get off to a very good start by killing a large number of these French troops. But the problem is, um, one of the other French players is moving up a large number of reinforcements on my flank. And my British opponent is currently tied up with, um, with cavalry that is charging into his men. So he's trying to get these French cavalry out of his lines. So he cannot move forward to support me. And this leaves my left flank in jeopardy. And these men get routed. So now I have to pull back. And I'm considering whether or not I want to stay in this fight. Now fortunately, the reason I left my Prussian fusilier back here is because it keeps these Frenchmen from um, getting too much onto my flank. But at this point, I decide that the only option is a full and complete retreat. So I did move across the Bridge of Uncertainty, and uh, once I got across, I was uncertain whether I had made the right decision. So you can see my men um, being beaten up badly as they run back to the bridge and run for their life. The good thing is, my light infantry can now guard my retreat. Thank goodness, or else my men would have died a certain death there. So, the uh, Peninsula of Sorrow, <laughs> the body count grows. You can see uh, many more uh, dead men there. So, yep, it's uh, definitely turning into a bloody fight, to say the least. And back here in No Man's Land, slash the Valley of Fireworks, uh, that's pretty much all that's going on. You can see that there's just a constant stream of crisscrossing um, howitzer fire, which I think that my opponents, or my teammates, are getting the better of. You can see one of the uh, opposing howitzer units here, which has taken severe damage and another one that has taken severe damage as well. So, uh, yep, a lot of artillery fire going on over there. But, on my end of the battle here on the east side, uh, there's a lot more tenacious type fighting going on. So now you're about to see a little bit of a Prussian civil war. Remember that choke point I told you about, and those brave foot guards that I pointed out? Uh, they are about to be fighting outnumbered three to one. That's right. There are five enemy musketeers and one enemy foot guard versus my two foot guards and um, my two units of already depleted Prussian fusilier. They are the only ones who can guard this choke point, uh, them along with my cavalry, but as you know, getting cavalry into a choke point is going to be tricky at best. So a uh, you can see the dust stirring in what is uh, most certainly going to be a bloody encounter. Now this video is going to be very long, and that's because uh, it's going to be two pieces, I'm certain. Um, but that's because it was a very interesting fight, I thought. A very large battle, and many of you have asked me to do team battles on Napoleon. Uh, team battles are hard to get good footage of, because most of the time people quit. As soon as things start uh, not going their way, then it doesn't turn out to be very interesting. This particular battle was different. So my opponent moved up his uh, musketeers and my light infantry started to chew them up. I killed 25% um, of this unit. Here's some more musketeers coming to line up. So as, as I said, you can see he has six units of infantry plus his general, and one of those units of infantry is foot guards. Oh, actually, he has two foot guards. <laughs> my bad. So, um, yeah, this is going to be an even more brutal fight than uh, I had originally let on. So it's four units of musketeers and two foot guards versus my two foot guards and my two Prussian fusilier. What I do have here is a range advantage, but I have to use it carefully. My opponent wheels up within range of my light infantry, but not within range of my foot guards, and he's doing that because his stray shots are going to kill my foot guards in the process. So I have to retreat my, uh, my, my light infantry or else he's going to kill me in this manner. So now my opponent has no choice, uh, because he has no long range units in the vicinity, but to march up and take the, uh, the wrath of a full volley of my two foot guard units. And as soon as he does march forward and my foot guards open fire, I am going to uh, run my light infantry back forward. So, for Prussia, men. For Prussia. Fight to the death. Alright, so as I said, here comes my light infantry back forward. Now to add supporting fire. They're going to duck down in front of my uh, line infantry. So you can see the overwhelming odds which my men face. They are facing artillery fire. And like I said, I have four units to my opponent's six. And uh, my opponent does have just as many foot guards in the fight as I do. But you can see his men are bottlenecked, and my men are spread out. 
So you can see the smoke coming off of this massive firefight here. And drifting off the battlefield. So here's the action from the, uh, the opposing sides. This unit of musketeers gets quickly routed under intense fire. But um, even though I routed the first couple of units pretty quickly, my opponent still has a lot of men. And another problem that I'm facing is my foot guards only have limited ammunition, just like his units. So although my men are high quality, they've only got so much ammo, and they're quickly running out of ammo from this intense fight. Let's go back and take a look at my brave men, who are standing their ground like uh, absolute Spartans. So maybe these men were inspired by the Spartans, because here they are fighting a choke point battle against overwhelming numbers. So let's take a walk up the line here. Here they are standing their ground, now my opponent uh, might have made a melee charge, but the problem is he would have taken so much fire on the way in, and uh, he would have been fighting foot guards as well, so that would have been foolish. So my opponent is doing the best he can do, um, but I have this choke point pretty well, um, pretty well handled with my elite units. You can see they have like the cool little marshmallow thing on their hat. So uh, you can see that my men are suffering high casualties. And the artillery's not helping either, but has the morale of my foot guards wavered? Absolutely not. I love these guys. So, in order to get my opponent to lose, I ran a, a unit of lance, or, yeah, lancers through the uh, spot left by my opponent's routing musketeers, and I force him to uh, form squares. And I also chase his general out into the middle of the fight, where his general unit starts to get shot um, by my men. So now my opponent has had to form squares, uh, but if he forms squares, that means my foot guards and remaining light infantry are going to mow them down. So you can see one of my opponent's foot guard units here um, does not have enough men to form into square, and so I'm going to route them off the battlefield before my horsemen die. And there they go. So my opponent is now down one unit of foot guards. Uh, the bad thing is, I did manage to route my enemy's general, and uh, all of his units except for this last foot guard musketeer, but um, as you just heard the announcer guy say, uh, my units are out of ammunition. Uh, at least they're down to the very end. So my foot guards no longer have any ammunition left. And I tell them to go ahead and run away, but as they're running away, my foot guards say, but please, General, we do not wish to run. We wish to fight, and fight for the glory of Prussia, <laughs> or something to that order. And so turn and fight, I allow them to do. And here they are, bravely charging against a numerically superior enemy. And I choose to uh, charge my opponent's foot guards. And they open fire on my, uh, my unit that has fewer men. And uh, they are killed. But my remaining unit of foot guards drops their bayonets and goes in for some close man-to-man -man combat. And here they are fighting for the honor of their country and for their very lives. And they are outnumbered uh, very badly. My unit of foot guards has 29 men, my opponent has 48 foot guards there, and then also this unit of musketeers further up the hill that has 74 men still. And so in order to not leave my foot guards stranded, I start to run some cavalry in this direction. Because now that my opponent is in a melee fight, he won't be able to fire upon my cavalry. Look how bravely my men stand their ground. Of course, it is kind of hard to tell whose men are whose, um, as that the other Prussians look exactly like mine. But uh, my foot guards fight valiantly. You can see that they have two chevrons now from the number of men that they've killed. Very impressive. I believe in the end, this one unit of foot guards ended up getting 169 kills. However, um, if they stayed in this fight, they would probably lose. They're, only, they're down to 21 men. And so to uh, help balance the situation, here comes a unit of Lancers that I sent in. And they're going to uh, finally come to the aid of my brave men. So here, the uh, massive Prussian Civil War has come to an end. And my foot guards now finally now that they've won the fight, uh, decide to flee from the field. Mainly because some of them died for my own horsemen. So wow, was that ever an engagement. My goodness. Uh, that was pretty much the definition of epic. 
All right, once again, back at the Bridge of Uncertainty, uh, my teammate Tommy Samba and myself believe uh, that we can be certain enough to cross the bridge this time now that I've destroyed that Prussian army. So here we are, quickly marching across the bridge. Uh, my remaining Prussian fusiliers still um, control the area surrounding the bridge. This was a, um, a complete tactical um, superiority that I had here, and it really kept our opponents from being able to mount an offensive against us. And uh, you know how the old saying goes, fortune favors the bold. And since we're moving forward and we have the initiative, uh, fortune is going to favor us. But you can see that there are a lot of French troops in the vicinity and an entire French army back here on this hill. Uh, the opponent back here, SJ Bennett II, pretty much just sat back and shot his artillery at us after I dealt him those many losses early on in the battle. But once we cross the bridge, it's not going to be hard for him to come and close in on our flanks. So uh, Tommy Sama and I know that we're fighting a, an uphill battle, but we assume that we can get this done. So back in the uh, Valley of Many Fireworks, uh, my, my teammates have finally suppressed the enemy howitzers, and you can see the enemy troops here moving off and coming into this battle here, hoping to destroy us, and then move on to this high ground back here from which to uh, make their last stand. So the artillery fight over here in the battle, or in the valley, is over finally. So all the troops you see here are my teammates troops. And uh, here's all the French reinforcements um, funneling across this bridge uh, to come over here to the peninsula of many sorrows. And you can see that at this time there are many sorrows being uh, caused on this peninsula. Check out the sweet little mushroom cloud of dirt there. So here you can see Tommy Sama's troops firing over, and I'm not even sure whose French troops these are at this point, because like I said, this was the battle of many, many Frances. I believe it was um, five of the players out of the eight were France. Yep, so my line infantry is uh, firing on these uh, French, but uh, the problem is I have artillery on my flank, and I can't move up too close because looming back here in the background is a unit of unhuman super soldiers known as the Old Guard. Their very presence on the battlefield scares your men. And uh, I have to be extremely careful because once these men turn to the fight, um, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> 